founder founded his company back in 2004. Now he's really taking crypto and applying it to the gaming industry with the third largest, as of today, token issuance on record, raised about 53 million bucks and then issued his own credits as exchange for that. Excited about it, really it, bringing in this new ecosystem so that developers can make more money and keep more of the hard work that they're putting into building these games. This is The Top, where I interview entrepreneurs who are number one or number two in their industry in terms of revenue or customer base. You'll learn how much revenue they're making, what their marketing funnel looks like, and how many customers they have. I'm now at $20,000 per top. Five and six million. He is hell bent on global domination. We just broke our 100,000 unit soul mark. And I'm your host, Nathan Latka. Many of you listening right now don't have time to listen to every B2B SaaS CEO that I've interviewed. If you want to get access to the database I've created with year-over-year -year growth rates, customer accounts, margins, and many, many other data uh, metrics and data points, you can go to getlatka.com. Here's the thing, though. This that database, I keep it to myself. It's so freaking valuable. And to preserve the quality of the data and make sure that the people that have access to it have a true advantage, I'm only letting 10 companies on each month. So we're full business. This month, but you can go to getlatka.com to get on the waiting list for next month. And look, there's big people on the waiting list. I mean, the biggest VCs you've ever heard of. You've probably heard of them. They're big, private equity, billions and billions under management. So it's an impressive waiting list. Go get on now at getlatka.com. This is episode 770. Coming up tomorrow morning, I talk to the king of mobile app installs with over $320 million spent. Hello, everyone. My guest today is Sergey Shalom. And uh, look, many of you may know him, some of you may not know him, but here's his background. As a teenager, he was a championship level gamer and created the first large gamer group called Esport Tournaments in Russia for a, a game called Quake. After receiving a PhD in mathematical modeling, Sergey founded Datcroft Games LTD in 2004. Over the past 13 years, the company has developed multiple worldwide popular games with millions and millions of users. He continues to oversee a company of over 100 employees that continues to bring new cutting edge games to the market. Their latest game called Pixel Wars is really going to be released later this summer and has already received critical acclaim and is going to become the game changer in mobile esport. He's been a proponent of using blockchain technology to solve many problems in the gaming industry. That's what we're going to focus on today. Sergey, are you ready to take us to the top? I'm ready, man. I'm All right. Very, very okay. So I am, I'm, I'm binging a little bit on this whole crypto world, which is why I wanted to have you on because you're kind of taking it from a gaming approach. You know, a lot of the people I've had on that talk about crypto crypto, they're all in the crypto Kool-Aid, right? They like founded Ethereum or something like that. So I'm looking for practical applications of how people are using crypto in industries that my audience already understands. So tell us more about your gaming company and tell us why and how you're thinking about crypto. Absolutely. This is a very good uh, question that you asked uh, in regards of crypto and blockchain, what's going around. Like the, there is a really huge hype about everything uh, that is connected to crypto and blockchain, but at the same time we do not see many projects that is really using this technology yes and this is exactly what we're doing and what we're going to deliver uh, we like we really uh, going to make changes in a couple of industries uh, thanks to crypto and blockchain mm -hmm. this is our goal so therefore when uh, you're asking to talk uh, more about gaming company that um, uh, we've been building all here together and uh, the outcome of this company I prefer not to talk about uh, the company that we have but about the things that we will deliver this year already uh, for all the industry and how exactly blockchain is capable to change uh, this, uh, everything together. I, I want to talk more about that, but people will, but like when you say we're going to release this and it's going to be X, they'll believe you more if they understand more about your past success. So quickly give us okay. a window into that. When did you launch your game? You launched in 2004, right? Uh, 2004, we organized the company. Then, after uh, three years, we released one of our successful games, uh, Fragoria. This is a uh, well known uh, MMORPG localized on 15 languages, like millions and millions of users worldwide. This is one of our success stories. So, uh, thanks to that game, we, we became the company that, where we are at the moment. And how, and, does that, uh, how does that game help you make money? Do you sell like virtual goods? How, what's the revenue yes, model? Yes, it, it is a free to play game. It's still available. It's, uh, you still can enjoy it this game and yes it's based on uh, monetization is based on selling virtual items and what, uh, what percentage of those millions of users decide to like buy at least one thing 
uh, well, approximately 5% of players buying something inside of web games. It is a web game in mobile. This amount is a little bit less, but uh, still, uh, this is exactly why we, we so much believe in blockchain and crypto, because even in this regard, it could be very much helpful not only to game development studios to improve their KPIs, but also to gamers to get additional benefits simply playing games. Okay. And we'll talk about it a little bit later. And that first, so this first game you created, you said it, you launched the whole business in 2004. As you said, it took you two years to build the game and release your first game? Yes. yes. So you are you had no revenue those first two years? Yes. As a We're, founder, how do you support yourself? Uh, we, we had another businesses. We, we've got money from there. We didn't run for any, um, let's say, uh, fundraising, so uh, joining some VCs. And no, still we are fully independent. We do not have any VC background, anything. We simply um, working and growing thanks to the products that we've been uh, developing for these years. And another project, which is not the game, but the gaming platform, Game Credit Store, that we're going to release very soon. It will be a story changing for the gaming industry and it will happen already this fall. Uh, this uh, platform we've been developing for more than two years, again, without any profit coming out. Of it. Yeah, so we, we, let's say, know how to do it without uh, getting any profit, anyway, investing, because we are such a believers all over here. We are right now a team of 150 people with uh, offices in uh, four countries. Like, we are so international and we are so, so big believers and uh, highly professional team. And so taking back to, so first year you had zero Zero games released and no revenue. Uh, last year in 2016, how many games have you released and what was total revenue? Uh, by that time, we have something about five games. Uh, four of them, like new games on mobile, and uh, exactly the one that you were saying in this uh, short introduction, uh, Pixel Wars, so we've been developing again for more than two years. It's going to, to become available this year, and it, it, it's again in many uh, ways uh, a revolutional game. Nobody uh, saw anything like that on mobile. Um, but uh, to answer on revenue, well, you know what? The, the interesting thing, and maybe in this regard, um, me and our team, a little bit different from all the rest uh, entrepreneurs who who's really counting every dollar and all your questions. Well, Sergey, just we should real quick, I just want to day. stop you because it, it, I, I don't want to. I don't want you to make you feel like you're dancing. I'm I'm not interested in you counting dollars. You you gave up revenue uh -huh. the first two years to make sure you built a quality product. But uh -huh. I I okay. will lose people listening if they don't believe you've had some kind of business success because they'll go, this guy's just losing a bunch of money and or he raised a bunch of venture capital and he doesn't know actually how to make a business around it. So just what's what's the number? What was 2016 revenue? Eight, eight, eight digit numbers uh, in revenue okay. we got, so we're pretty fine. With Good. That. So between yeah. between 10 million and 100 million. Yeah. Okay, and that's all from selling regular no crypto, all regular currency, virtual goods inside your five games. Well, you know, it's hard. We, we do not differentiate right now many things due to the fact that we're building a real ecosystem of platforms, games, payment processing, esports, like all of that together connected and bringing us dividends in many ways and many streams coming from. So that's pretty hard for me to tell what is exactly the part of gaming. Well, let me let me let me break that. Consider it anymore like that. Let me break that down real quick. So you you pro you when you started, you were obviously just making money from selling virtual goods and then you said, yes. oh my gosh, our payment processing fee is like 3%. We should build our own to get that margin back. Now you're in the payment processing business. Is that yeah. accurate? Yes, I see. something like that, yes. And then we understood like platforms taking 30% away from developers, why we shouldn't have our platform which provide 90% to developers. And mm -hmm. right now we have this platform and preparing for the release. All of this, like we're really preparing to, to change the story um, and change the rules on so, existing Sergey, markets. how did you decouple your yeah. dependency from, I assume you're talking about Apple or Google Play taking 30%. Yeah. How, how are you getting new, I mean, the reason most people are on there is because they help them get new users, Apple and Google do. How did you decouple yourself from those platforms? How do you get new users? if you don't rely on them. Yeah, and that's exactly um, uh, the, the moment when crypto is coming because uh, crypto is capable to help us to monetize uh, um, uh, audience in a way when developers are capable to receive uh, faster revenue, which is very important, and bigger revenue. And when uh, we will be able uh, to prove uh, every game developer that in case if he is trying to acquire a user in, to his game somewhere in Google Play, or he's trying to do the same 
but trying to lead his user to game credit store, then he will simply measure trying to compare the difference in return on investment. And when we will prove him that more revenue happens in our store, then it will become storage engine. And then game developers by themselves will start promote and start running user acquisition campaigns to get users inside of game credit store rather than Google Play. So this is a final mission, this is a final goal, and it will happen. But before that, of course, we will run our own uh, marketing campaigns. We have many millions to spend for that, and we're preparing right now to enter uh, Indian market, which is one of the most exciting markets right now, uh, which is ready before the huge jump, like it has happened years ago in China. Right now, Indian market is exactly at the same position, so we're very excited, and we're preparing for this fall to come and uh, really uh, become a huge player there in gaming and not only gaming. So, so going back to my question, a lot of these games get a lot of traction because Apple features them or Google Play features them. Yeah. You're saying they should use game or my game credit store that I'm building because it's all based on crypto. Yeah. But but how are you going to help them juice the number of users like Apple and Google do? Uh, it's pretty simple. It's at the end of the, of the day, it's not that important if Apple featuring you or not. It's just additional bonus. Anyway, you have to run your marketing activities very heavily and spend millions of dollars to get on the top of the charts. Yeah, but uh, in our case, certainly uh, at the start, we will not have like thousands and millions of games like it is right now on Apple or Google. So all of the games that will be presented at the beginning that would love to see themselves in Game Credit Store, they all welcome to go and uh, to upload uh, uh, their products and uh, to see them online and then the marketing uh, efforts that we will run because we are going to acquire already this year tens of millions of users in India all of them will come and see not like millions of games but few hundreds of them and then certainly everybody will get additional portion and benefits out of this but that's only let's say the vis uh, visible part at the moment all of the rest very important features and unique selling points of our store will, which will differentiate our store from Google Play and Apple and all the rest third-party stores these are the most important and here we're talking about mobile sport here we're talking about tournaments and many other things that are not existing anywhere else I see and will be available in our place. I understand what well, uh, going to crypto real quick getting a little scientific here uh, mm -hmm. hopefully I don't lose folks in the audience but uh, what are you gonna build what blockchain are you gonna build game credits on top of uh, and what coin are you gonna use uh, game credits as a coin exist now already for more than three years on the market, so it's absolutely fair uh, approach. When we decided to not release a new one, we took the existing one. Who built the, the existing one? Side. Yes. Uh, so uh, game credits coin has been built on um, the same standard uh, blockchain as a bitcoin on a litecoin script yes maybe it's too technical but anyway uh, for three years it's on the market and we have thousands and thousands of investors who has it already on the market Got it. Uh, additionally to that uh, we've been running uh, recently uh, one of the most successful crowd sales in this world with the name mobile go where we've been you mean a, um, you mean a token issuance Yes, yeah. yes, it has happened this May and we've been raising 53 million, which became uh, number um, uh, four result worldwide in crowd sales and uh, number one result in crypto by that time. Right now, like we are in the third place as far as I know. Who's number one and time. number two? Uh, I forgot their names. Like Come on, Sergey, those are the people you have to beat. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Okay, so I'm no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. So so how are we going to use the money? Yes, and this is uh, the most interesting part because we've been promising that half of money, so uh, 26.5 millions, we will put on marketing, and that's exactly to answer your question where from we will get millions of users. We are really seriously preparing to buy traffic for our store and so, run it on a way better than Google. Doing so Sergey, how how will you take the, the that 26 million right? Facebook ads don't I imagine that's where you spend maybe to acquire users you can't pay with Bitcoin right or or, or Litecoin whatever your token is how do you translate what you raise in crypto to actual you know, like US dollars so you can spend it on Facebook ads or whatever you want to spend it on nothing I get uh, this uh, question is pretty often raising yeah, right now when there is such a uh, hype around ICOs what is happening about them so of course everybody is concerned how to get uh, real money uh, dollars or whatever out of it and there are legal ways and all you need to do is just to work with the uh, legals with lawyers no but i mean do you just use a good exchange like coinbase i mean is that how you do it 
There, there are different ways how to do it, but we are not doing it like a private uh, people uh, just sending to some exchange and getting uh, money out of it. No, no, no. There are ways how you do it with the companies, with entities paying taxes and all of this. Okay. So and how did people get, like the people that bought the $53 million worth of crypto, what did they yeah. like? What did they put in and what did they get back? Were they just like mining and they got it free or did they actually put money in and you issued the, the, the crypto tokens to them? Yeah, in our case, they put different uh, cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Litecoin, um, uh, Ethereum, Litecoin, it was not like waves and game credits, it was like four coins. Uh, they put it inside and uh, out of the value, we understood that it was 53 million. So right now it's it's bigger because the market is growing, so we yeah. have more and more power to present. And then it's uh, it's pretty simple. Back, they received amount of mobile gold tokens, which is proportional to their own investments. So each of them right now, and this is, we are very proud that we've been the one who were able to run a real crowd sale in crypto because we had almost 10,000 crypto investors. None, none other uh, ICOs had that many. So, Usually it's like a couple of hundreds of uh, um, big whales and that's it. In our case, it's real crowd sale. So, and all of them, they, they have these mobile gold tokens right now. And so, Sergey, they, they basically what happened is most of what you raised was from four tokens, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ether, which is on Ethereum. What was the fourth big coin? Uh, Bitcoin, Auger, Ethereum, Waves, and Game Credits. And Game Credits. Okay, and then you took those four coins and basically said, okay, there's a trading ratio. We're going to give you Game Credits. And, and that's what those people are holding. Now, are those, is that actually control of the company? In other words, is that dilutive to you or no? Uh, not really. We gave them back mobile Go tokens. So we have two tokens right now. Yes, yeah? so it's another token. Okay. They received it. And uh, according to the, uh, to the utility that this token, new token, will receive in the future business, because this token will be used exactly in mobile e-sport, in wagering, in some other directions based on smart contracts where we will be able to provide absolutely fair um, e-sport and betting, etc. So yeah. And then just to be clear, be, Sergey, sorry, they'll be able to use those tokens to like actually you play games download games for free buy virtual to no when when it's live they will be when it, that's when that's why that's what's holding the value exactly yeah and then imagine like we're talking about millions and millions of users and do not forget that almost uh, a half of our population in, in this planet playing games so the market is huge the market is tremendous and this market is not even touching crypto in a way how we're going to do it so we're yeah. talking here about massive crypto adoption when millions of users will start using crypto will start playing games and spend real money afterwards converted to crypto etc there are so many things that we're going to provide and we're talking about the community that will be much bigger than existing community of bitcoin one day this is our goal yep yeah? quick answer here because we're running out of time why doesn't apple or, or google just launch their own token issuance and, and do this exact same thing when they will do it i will be one of the most happiest person and at the same time no that wasn't my I, question I, strategically why haven't they done it yet uh, well they're doing fine why they should do it well, it I sounds mean, like you're like bullish on this because you're going to basically take away their 30% cut. So my question is, why wouldn't they undercut themselves? Why would they let you undercut them instead of them undercutting themselves? Look, pretty simple. They are for-profit companies. We are non-profit company. We have only one goal to provide all 100% that is generated by uh, by the business to provide it to developers and to gamers mm -hmm. yes and a part of it even to charity yes so no profit we are going to get out of it and uh, le le to answer the question why google and uh, apple don't do it they have a different business model it's for profit business mm -hmm. model we don't have it we're not interested in it well you so have to make money in order to in order to pay your 100 employees correct and i imagine you take a salary right so you have to make some money we have enough the, the funny stuff that we have enough we're not worried about like uh, that we, we have have, uh, businesses gaming businesses which is going very good so we're not worried about this stuff we are worrying about changing uh these industries and uh to improve it in many ways very and good if some of big players will follow everything that we're doing and starting to pay developers not 70 percent but 90 percent as we are going to do well this is a huge win for us we will be very proud of it. 
All right, guys, I talked about this earlier, but I schedule, like, so many meetings that would blow your mind. I mean, all my podcast interviews, right? Hundreds of entrepreneurs I talk to monthly. I schedule, and you know what? I do it so efficiently. I get them all to agree to my calendar, so all the calls are back to back to back. That means I'm not switching in between tasks all day long. I get them to batch so that I can be very efficient. It's so critical. I use a tool called Acuity Scheduling to do this at NathanLacka.com forward slash schedule. It eliminates the back and forth between me and people I'm trying to meet with. It makes it very simple. And most importantly, they help me keep my no-show rate very low because they send out reminders. Helps you look very professional. So go to NathanLacka.com forward slash schedule to sign up. And you get a great deal. You know, you guys know this. I hit people hard. I make great deals. And Gavin, the CEO, has given us a great deal. If you sign up like normal people, okay, on their website, you only get a 14-day free trial. If you use my link, nathanmicah.com forward slash schedule, you get 45 days free. Okay, it's the best. It's free. Go to nathanmicah.com forward slash schedule right now to sign up, and I'll see you there. Great. Sergey, let's wrap up with the famous five. These are one-word answers. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Uh, Richard Branson. Uh, number two, is there, a, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Uh, one more time. Is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? I didn't get this question. Is what there a CEO that you are studying or following right now? Um, not really, not really. Okay, number three. Is there a favorite online tool you have, like Acuity Scheduling? Uh, using everything that Apple provides by default. Nothing special. Okay, uh, number four. How many hours of sleep do you get every night? Um, four to five. Okay, and what's your situation? Married, single, do you have kids? Um, still no but in relations. That's an interesting question. <laughs> Got it. So not not married and no kids. Yeah, I have a kid, a daughter, ten, eleven years old. Oh, great. Anastasia, so hello. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay, so one kid. And how old are you, Sergey? I'm thirty-nine. Okay, last question. Take us back nineteen years. What do you wish your twenty-year-old self knew? Um, everything that has happened with me back in the years and everything that where I am at the moment, I'm pretty happy with. I don't want to change anything. Sorry, change. it's not something that you would change. It's like something you would tell your 20 year old self, like a lesson you wish you knew then that would have saved you time uh, or energy or money or something. Maybe, maybe just Sergey, push more. There you, go. there you guys have it from Sergey Shalom again, founder, founded his company back in 2004. Now he's really taking crypto and applying it to the gaming industry with the third largest as of today token issuance on record, raised about 53 million bucks and then issued his own credits as exchange for that. Excited about it, really it, bringing in this new ecosystem so that developers can make more money and keep more of the hard work that they're putting into building these games. Sergey, thank you for taking us to the top. Thank you, thank you everybody. If you enjoyed today's episode with Sergey, go back and listen to yesterday's episode with Tran. He says, do this to use your crypto coins to shop at Walmart or spend money regularly. 